Good afternoon, folks. So much stoke for the new yeah, fast. Pretty pumped for this, actually, Jeff. I mean, after Chris came on the podcast with us and just talked about the mimicry of the WP template hierarchy into yeah. uh, the JavaScript ecosystem is sick. I've been, I can't even sleep because this thing is so dope. Dude. <laughs> I feel like Faust JS needs its own theme song, like Highway to yeah. the Danger Zone by Kenny. You know what I mean? It makes me feel like Maverick flying into, you know, shameless Top Gun movie plug. If shameless Top Gun movie. Seen it. but <laughs> Yeah. And so heads up to everybody as well. Uh, we're going to record this session and post it on our YouTube. Um, so just, yeah, hi, hi, Highway to the Dev <laughs> Rel. Rel so. Oh, man, we might need to do a parody of that. That sounds that sounds fantastic. But yeah, heads up that this is going to be recorded. We'll give everybody just another minute or two to get in. Um, and then we'll get rolling. Oh, it was a drummer. Sweet beats for it. That Man, sounds good. Sick. We'll trade free WordPress hosting for three free drum beats. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> and node hosting, wow. obviously. Yeah, that's a good deal. It's a good deal, like. <laughs> You won't get a better deal anywhere else. You'll have some, you'll, we'll see what the coupon code for that looks like. Uh, sorry. I've been inside my house hiding from a hurricane for a few days. So can see where my, my head's at, but all right, everybody. I mean, it seems like, yeah, 202. Sam says there's a ton of people here. So you know what? I say we get rolling. Um, and Sam's going to drop a poll as we get started. So feel free. Yeah, definitely give us some answers to these polls. Um, we're definitely kind of using them to, you know, get, give really good information back to the product teams who are working on us, uh, or working with us on, on these presentations. Um, so very cool. Hopefully some of y'all know me. I am Jeff Everhart. I am a developer advocate with WP Engine. Um, and today we're going to talk about the next version of Faust. And I got a ton of people here on this call with me. And so I'm going to let them uh, sort of just go around and introduce themselves. Fran, why don't we kick, kick it over to you? And yeah. Hi, everybody. Faust dev team folks. Yeah, I'm I'm Fran Agulto with the DevRel team here at WP Engine on the headless side of things. Jeff Everhart is my cohort. If you've listened to our podcast, you've seen the rapport between us and uh Definitely super stoked to be here. So I'm going to pass this over to my main man, Blake Wilson, on the Merlin team. Yeah, thanks, Brandon. Hey, everyone. Nice to meet you all. Um, I think I've seen some of you before in Discord, um, maybe on GitHub. But uh, yeah, I'm Blake Wilson on Team Merlin. It's kind of the WP Engine team that uh, works on Faust and Blueprints. So uh, nice to meet you all. Uh, I'm going to be presenting today with Matt. So I'll uh, kick it over to Matt. Not sure. Is Matt here? Matt, you're muted if you're talking. I said a whole bunch of really important stuff that was <laughs> life changing. So I apologize that you missed that. Yeah, I was just saying that, uh, yeah, so Joe and Teresa are here as well. They're also developers on our team on Team Merlin. So thanks to them for being here as well. And we'll go ahead and get started. So the next version of Faust, of course, the new version. Uh, Blake's going to cover the agenda and then we'll jump right into it. Cool. Yeah. So today, uh, just going to do a quick little introduction of what we've been working on in Faust give a high level overview of some of the key features. Um, and then we'll pop into a live demo and kind of a, a hybrid Q&A. So feel free during the live demo or even this whole presentation, if you have a question, drop it in the chat and uh, we'll try and get to that. Um, after that, we'll talk, talk about some final thoughts and, uh, and then we'll go from there. Cool, so what have we been working on? So <clears throat> past six, seven months now, we've been working on this new version of Faust that have some seriously major improvements. So the first one being we're migrating from GQD, which is the GraphQL client that we were using before to Apollo. And so in this new version, Apollo is used under the hood. It's abstracted in a way where you don't need to provide any configuration, but it's there if you need it. Um, another piece that we're working on is a template hierarchy solution. So much like WordPress, there's a system that resolves templates depending on what URL you go to. Um, we're working on a feature like this for the JavaScript ecosystem. In addition to that, we have a plugin system for developers to tap into pretty much any piece of the framework and customize it as they see fit. 
We've got some helper functions for uh, Next.js file base pages in case you want to develop outside of the template hierarchy. We're also designing a WP GraphQL API um, and plugin to interact with Gutenberg blocks. Um, unfortunately, the lead for our Gutenberg work, Theo, is, wasn't able to make it today, so we might not get into super high level with that, uh, but hopefully we can have another one of these events in the future um, to demo all of our Gutenberg uh, features. And then finally, we're preserving all the features in Faust.js, as you know it, so previews, authentication, sitemaps, and all that kind of good stuff. All right, so I'll pass it over to Matt for the plugin system. And Matt is unmuted. All right, so getting into the plugin system. <clears throat> so first you're gonna locate your Faust config.js file in the project. And there's a property in the config that's called experimental plugins. And it accepts as many plugins as you would like in array format, as you can see on the right there. We have experimental plugins in an empty array currently. And like Blake said, we're using Apollo GraphQL client under the hood. And it's used in a way that doesn't require any configuration. So upfront, it will work out of the box. But if you want to customize it and change the cache settings and things like that, you can do that. Uh, just an aside, so the plugin system, we're using a hooks library. So we utilize the WordPress Gutenberg hooks package for our plugin system, and it's what's available inside the hooks portion of the apply method. It's basically a re-implementation of hooks and filters from WordPress, but in JavaScript instead of PHP. So many of the filters and hooks you get from the PHP plugins, we can now also use that on the JavaScript side. So in this particular example, we're using add filter to return a specific template, and you'll see a complete basic plugin is shown with the required elements. So you'll see on the right here, you have the JavaScript class, my plugin. You have the apply method with the hooks being passed in. And then you also have your add filter being pulled from hooks. So in this case, what you see is add filter is <clears throat> attaching to the possible templates list filter and it's returning possible templates. Plus it's also now adding the testing template. So after the plugin is created, you can use it in the configuration by updating experimental plugins. So here you see we're passing in new plugin into the experimental plugins in set config. So imagine, for example, that you want to render a template based on an ACF field for a specific product page. And this could be for marketing or other reasons. If the product is on sale, we want to show the specific sale template. So as you can see here, we're using add filter. It is attaching to the cQuery document node filter, and we're actually returning a GraphQL node. In this case, obviously, it's going to be empty because there's no uh, no information inside the node by URI. But you can see that you can you can return a variety of different things, including the objects, and in this case, a query or obviously strings and things like that. So Next.js file-based pages. Um, the file-based pages have been set up in a way with helpers and utilities to very closely mimic the template-based pages. So we're using the Apollo use query hook, a query property for GraphQL querying, and then also the get next static props and get next server side props, which is our implementation of the get static and get server side props. And we'll get a little bit more into detail of that. So okay. Apollo's use query is used to get the GraphQL query from the cache. And you can see it there on the right constant data use query page dot query. And you can also do traditional Next.js pages or utilize our utilities to run a query. So you don't have to use the dot query and the use query, um, but you can if you want to make things a little bit easier. And we'll show some more examples of that in our live demo. So page query is the GraphQL query for the page's content and title. And you can see it there on the right. Uh, it's pulling, it's going back the sample page. And then get static props is executed on server side and it's passed the props onto the client. But you'll see inside there, we have get next static props is wrapped. And that is actually getting the props for the page and executing the query. So again, this is just a helper function that makes things a little bit easier. We recommend using it, but you don't have to use it. And I will pass it back to Blake for the template hierarchy. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Matt. All right, if we go to the next slide, please. All right, also, for those of you that have built uh, WordPress themes in the past, you may have seen this graph before. This is the WordPress template hierarchy, the resolver that works for um, WordPress theme. So, you know, say, for example, you go to slash sample page. Um, that's a single page, single post page. You know, you can have, uh, uh, let's see here, page dot or page hyphen slug, page hyphen ID and so on. So essentially, we're trying to replicate this in the uh, in JavaScript ecosystem. So now if you could go to the next slide, please. Yeah, so how does this work under the hood? So first off, we make a preliminary request. We're kind of calling this the seed query. And this gets information about a given URI. So using that previous example of sample page, 
Uh, we make this request, we get a bunch of data back. So you can see that on the right here. So we get the type name, URI, the ID, database ID, whether it's a content node or not, what the post type is, and all this information we use under the hood to get a list of possible templates that could be used or resolved for that given URI. So once we get a list of all those possible templates, we take a look at your templates folder and we see, okay, you've got page.js or single.js. Let's use that. Um, from there, we actually render that particular template and we can go into that template convention uh, next here. So the template structure, the template convention, um, these Faust templates are composed of three main parts. So we've got the component. This is what renders the entire page. You can think of this as a traditional React component or a Next.js page. It's your presentational layer um, for that given template. The second piece is a GraphQL query. So this would be component.query. And this is just a GraphQL string that you can add here, much like in WP GraphQL. The great thing is you can actually copy and paste your queries directly from WP GraphQL into this query string it makes things really uh, super simple. And then the third piece is the GraphQL variables. So this is a callback um, component.variables. And in this callback, you get access to things like all that seed information that we talked about before. So the URI, database ID, whether it's a content type or not. Um, and then you can use this to inject it into your, um, your GraphQL query that we mentioned up above. Uh, the great thing about this is not only do you have access to the seed query, but you get access to more context as well. So for example, if the URI is a preview uh, URI or not. So um, if you're all, you all are familiar with old Faust, um, you kind of had to have multiple components for, you know, one component for previews, one components for your actual, you know, single blog post page. Um, those days are gone. Now you can just use that context as preview and inject that right in your template. And you know, you're using templates for both previews and your actual uh, production blog post pages. Uh, finally, we have a directory called WP templates that sits there at the root of your uh, app. And that's where you specify your, your list of templates there that you wanna use. Alrighty, so that kind of gives a high, high level overview of some of the new features. Let's pop into a live demo and uh, we can go from there. Let's see here, give me one second. Cue the elevator music. Yeah. 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 And while, while Blake's spinning up this demo, if anybody has questions or kind of wants us to like deep dive or steer towards anything that they talked about already, feel free to throw that stuff in the chat. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Y'all, um, are you able to see my screen? Cool deal. All right. So um, first thing I want to talk about is the template hierarchy system. Before we do that, I just want to give you all a quick overview of what is in our app. So this is just a really simple getting started um, Faust app. You can see here we've got our Faust config. So here's the templates that I talked about earlier. Here's our experimental plugins list. We've got possible types. This is an Apollo uh, construct that you know allows you to generate your possible types. We also have a function to generate those as well in our package.json. You can see here, we've got our traditional scripts, dev, build, and start. And you can also see here, we're using Faust dev, Faust build, Faust start. So in this version of Faust, we have our own CLI. And this is just a, another thing that makes the developer experience a little bit better. You know, if you forget your environment variables, we can prompt you and make sure, um, you know, if you're trying to use previews that you have your um, headless secret key set and stuff like that. So it just makes the de development experience a little bit better. Um, we've got two new packages. It's at Faust WP CLI and at Faust WP core. If you're using old Faust, um, <laughs> these are scoped under a different package name. So there's no, uh, you know, if you if you upgrade to the latest version of old Faust, it's not going to uh, pull in these latest changes. These are entirely separate projects just to make sure your projects on old Faust, um, you know, are not interrupted. So, yeah, we could jump right into it. Um, let me run my app here. So load up on local 3000. Now, this app is super, super bare bones. As you can see, it's just pulling in just really simple data, the, the site title, site description, a menu, and then some content here. So let's take a look at localhost 3000. So this is technically my homepage. If we go to my front page template here, we can see these three different things that I talked about earlier. So we got our component, this is our presentational layer. We've got our component.query. This is all the data that we need for this given page or template. And we're not using component.variables here. We don't need it, but I can show you another example of that um, in the future. So let's just revisit our homepage again. And you can see here in our console, we've got a list of possible templates that we can use. So this corresponds to the WordPress template hierarchy. You can see here it's front page, 
home and index. And in this case, I've got my front page template, so it's resolving this. As we can see here, we just got our title, description, menu, and then we're just returning some basic um, content here for our homepage. All of this data, like the site title, description, and uh, menu items are all fetched here in the component.query. So as a user, you really don't need to know um, or interact with Apollo at all. All you need to do is specify a query and you can get that data. Like I said, if you do need context into Apollo, you know, configuring settings and the cache, you are able to do that through the plugin system, um, which we'll get to shortly. So that's kind of the front page. It's very simple, you know, especially for home pages, you've got a lot of maybe marketing content that you're not using a bunch of, you're not querying for a bunch of data. Well, let's take a look at like the single page, the single blog post where you may need um, some more content here. So I've got a blog post just called testing new post here. And you can see it resolves, you know, my same header information, but it also pulls in the title written by John Doe. So we've got the author, the date it was published, and then the content. So the same thing works here. We've got a list of possible templates and you can see here, we got single post testing new posts. So this is concatenating the, um, you know, single post type and then the post type slug, single post type, single, and so on. So if you do want to get granular, you know, you could have a singular page for everything, your page, blog post, and so on, or you can have a single.js for just your blog pages, page.js for your pages, and, and so on. In this instance, you can see we do use the variables callback. So we're getting the database ID and as preview from context. So we've got two pieces in the callback here. We've got our seed node, our seed query, which has database ID, and then context we've got as preview. And you can see we're returning these variables and then we're using it up here in our components query. So we get database ID and as preview. And this is kind of what I was talking about earlier um, with kind of having preview templates being the same as their production counterparts. So I no longer need two separate components for the preview and actual production one. I can just pass in the as preview, um, you know, Boolean here and whether we do all the resolving on your end. So we're able to determine if the link is a preview link or not, and then set this accordingly. So your presentation layer doesn't change, but the data behind it does change depending on if you're a, on a preview link or not. Uh, before I go on, to the rest of the template hierarchy. Any questions so far? Uh, just feel free to unmute or put in the chat, but any questions so far? Yeah, so we, there's a bit of discussion about just kind of like, you know, whether or not this should resolve with custom custom post types. So maybe if you could handle that. And then Blake, I don't know if you will kind of want to show them what the pages directory looks like now and sort of how that node by URI query, you know, builds on the WordPress routing uh, already defined in the CMS. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. So to answer the questions about custom post types, um, those are supported. Um, there's one caveat is your custom post types need to have a public archive. And so as long as they're queryable by WP GraphQL, um, those will resolve in the template hierarchy system. So yeah, CPTs are supported. Um, in terms of the pages directory, um, yeah, glad you brought this up. Um, so the pages directory, in terms of setting this up for the template hierarchy system, um, the main thing that you need here is this WordPress node catch all route. So um, it's catch all denoted by the, the brackets here in the three periods. And we take a look inside here. We're using two main things exported from at FSVP core. So we've got our WordPress template here, which is a React component that we're returning from uh, the next page. And then get WordPress props, which is our um, server side or static site generation handler. So if you want to, you can use either get static props or get server side props. In this case, we're using uh, static props and then you just return your uh, get WordPress props function here. So again, this uh, function handles both get server side props and uh, get, uh, get server side props and get static props. Um, additionally, if you did wanna use everything client side rendered, we don't recommend this, but you can do that as well just by re you know, removing this. And now everything is done um, client side. That's pretty much all you need for the template hierarchy solution. Um, you can see here, we've got a few other things. The underscore app is the same thing. We're just importing our Faust provider. This is much like um, old Faust, you know, you're importing Faust provider and wrapping your entire app with it. And that's pretty much it. Um, you can see here, we've got example.js, which we'll go into in just a bit. This is kind of um, our Next.js file-based helpers that Matt talked about earlier. Um, that covers the pages directory. We also have the one API route that covers all of our um, 
Faust API routes, so stuff for previews, authentication, and all that kind of good stuff. Um, this is the same thing as old Faust as well. This hasn't changed. Um, so yeah, let's take a look now into, for example, a case where you might want something more particular in your um, WP templates. So if we pop over to- Like we had a, a quick question here. Sure, uh, yeah. So uh, sorry if I say the name wrong, IFO. Is, is there a way for WP GraphQL to read the data from a page that has short code? Let's see, is there a way for WP GraphQL to read the data from a page that has a short code? Is that, that might be a Jason Ball question maybe? Yeah, and he, J, Jason answered in the chat. And I think that the answer is the post.content uh, property should return. It, it should have been called do short code when they render the content. So that would happen before we actually get the, the content in Faust? It should, yeah, I, I believe so. Jason can correct me if I'm wrong in the chat. Gotcha. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you, Jason, for for uh, for answering that. Short kick, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, so uh, let's uh, take a look then at, um, so I've got this instance here. We can see in our WP templates directory, um, all of these are listed in the, in the index file. So you can see I've got front page, page, single archive. I've also got this un, this commented out category uncategorized. So let's take a look at that. Um, let's pop over to a archive page. So I believe if I go to posts here, I've got category uncategorized. So we're looking at an archive for a category and the category is uncategorized. You can see I've got my list of posts here. And this template we're using here is the archive template. So this handles uh, archives for categories, tags, and so on. But there might be a, there might be an instance where, okay, I want a particular template just for this one category or this one tag or so on. So let's say for the uncategorized template, I wanted my own template. Say we're having, um, you know, there's a, there's a marketing event where we would need a particular template just for this category. Um, you can see here, we're looking in our possible templates list for category uncategorized. We don't have that specified. We're also looking for category one. We don't have that category. We don't have that, but we do have archives. So that's what's being resolved. But if we go ahead and uncomment this, and you can see here, this is just a really basic component. It just returns a, a div that says uncategorized category template. But you can see now if we refresh this, we're now using this template for this category only. If we go to another category like testing, we can see it's still using the archive. So, this kind of just shows the power of the template hierarchy system, much like WordPress, you know, we're bringing that familiarity from WordPress over into the, into the headless space. Um, and the next thing can, I wanna... can I jump in real quick, Blake? Cause we did yeah, have some comments, like somebody, I think somebody said like I decoupled, so I didn't have to use the WP template hierarchy system. So could you spend mm -hmm. just like maybe a little time show, how would that work, right? Sure, um, yeah, absolutely. If they didn't wanna do that. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, so um, as Matt said before, the template hierarchy system is a nice to have if you need it, but if your intention is just to use Next.js file-based pages, um, that functionality is all still preserved, and uh, we can actually jump into that next. So um, if we we have this example page right here, and this is just a traditional Next.js file-based page. You can see here we're, we're specifying a page, and we are returning data. Um, so yes, if you don't need the um, WordPress template hierarchy solution, you don't need to use it at all. Um, it's just one of those nice tabs if you do need it. Um, if you do want to use the template hierarchy solution and in conjunction with Next.js pages, we also have some helper functions here that kind of make the convention similar. So you can see here, this is a Next.js page and uh, we're doing data fetching by calling page.query. And then uh, you have page.variables as well if you need that callback. But um, we've got these helper functions called get next static props and get next server side props that are um, essentially returned through your actual get static props and get um, server side props. And so what these are useful for is if you just want to have the same consistency and you know you don't want to mess around with your GraphQL client, you just want to um, drag and drop a query in and execute it. This convention works great here too for um, these Next.js file based pages. So you can see our example.js. If we go ahead and spin up the app again. Go to localhost 3000 slash example. You can see here it's saying my Next.js file base page, which is uh, just the data returned here. So, yeah, totally understand that. Um, if you want to use Next.js file base pages, all that functionality is still preserved. 
We have these helper methods for you to use if you'd like, but they're definitely not required. These are just something to make the consistency between the template hierarchy and Next.js file-based pages the same, but you could totally get rid of this and use your own client. You could use Fetch, uh, Apollo, GQD, anything you want here. Um, you know, we're not, we don't have any control or uh, limiting factors on the Next.js file-based pages. Just catching up here uh, with the chat, making sure I'm not missing anything. Alex says, why would someone want to use the template hierarchy? What are the benefits? Yeah, good question, Alex. So <clears throat> again, this is just one of those things that makes it a little bit more familiar from the WordPress perspective coming over to the decoupled um, WordPress side of things. In, in my opinion, the benefit here is just the conventions. You know, I've got um, three main pieces, my component, my presentational layer. I can, this is just any old React component. I can add anything here that I want to present on this given URI. And then I have this convention of just drag and dropping a query from maybe even WP GraphQL and um, executing it right here. For me, the power is the convention and the simplicity. I don't have to import Apollo. I don't have to configure anything and it's there all set up for me. Um, but you know, there is definitely use cases, maybe a search page or something like that, or a shop page where a Next.js file-based page totally makes sense. So we just wanna make sure we suppose support both of those avenues, depending on what the developer uh, you know wants to make. Yeah, and I'd also add to that, um, I, I do notice a lot of people who, when they make dynamic routes in just sort of the next JS pages directory, that they'll tend to use slug where maybe they should have used URI because like slug obviously doesn't support, you know, hierarchical pages and stuff like that. Um, so I think it does also sort of remove some foot guns where it's just like you have this catch all route at the bottom that's going to resolve a URI. Yeah, totally, Jeff. Yeah, very well said. I mean, you know, there's not, you're not, you're not going to hit much 404 pages in typical WordPress, thanks to the template hierarchy system. Kind of the same thing here. You can add um, content types in WordPress and have them automatically resolve in your Next.js front end just by relying on the template hierarchy system. So that's one of those um, kind of nice to haves as well. Yeah, change your permalink structure and things still work totally. Hey, cool. hey, Blake, we had a question a little further up. Um, Ryan asked, looks like a bit of boilerplate query fragments for global data. This was a little bit back. Um, is there any intention to provide a merge of query parameters used by template components? If it's like if it's rendered in the post content. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Great question. I, and I think I understand correctly. If, if I'm not, please correct me. But, um, you know, just like here, we've got, we're importing fragments and so on, and then calling them down here. Um, we actually, Jason Bond, actually, we we're just talking about this for an unrelated thing, but we were thinking, you know, because a part of the plugin system, you can tap into that seed query and maybe you need additional data. Say you need an ACF field in that seed query. Um, we want to be able to have users tap into that and merge in two queries, say the seed query, and then a user provided uh, query, merge that data together and then send it to Apollo. So we're kind of looking for solutions into doing that. There isn't really think anything out there right now that um, provides that functionality, um, but we do think that would be pretty useful in terms of the plugin system and, and accessing stuff uh, via the seed query. So I don't know if that answers your questions in terms of how that could help here, but uh, we are kind of exploring how we could merge two queries together and. Um, you know, resolve that through Apollo. Um, in terms of like the the um, fragments and stuff like here in the GraphQL query, I can kind of talk a little bit about that as well. Um, what make what I really like about this um, kind of convention is that you can co-locate your fragments, for example, with your components. So I don't have an example here. We just have a fragments folder, but um, say I have a header and I've got a header that's fetching my um, site title, site description and a menu. I can create a uh, component for that. And then the fragment that requests that particular data, import it here, and then just, you know, use the, use like the on union here to get all of that data. So um, hopefully that's helpful. I'm not sure if I answered your question or not. If not, I can, I can go into more detail, but. Uh... Yeah, Blake, we have a question, uh, you know, fairly important. Uh, or Melissa, did I miss something? Where will I get this new Faust from and when will it be available? Yeah, awesome question. So um, this is available right now. Um, as I said before, we've changed the um, the actual name. So it's at FaustWP slash CLI and at FaustWP slash core. So this was done intentionally just to make sure all the users on the existing Faust using GQD um, aren't interrupted when they update to latest. So you can start using this new version of Faust today 
using these two packages. Uh, we've also got updated docs on faustjs.com or .org. And so this getting started guide is now using um, our latest version of Faust with um, you know, all of our references to how templates work, the seed query, and so on. So this is all up to date. Um, if you still need access to all of your um, Faust stocks using um, just regular GQD, you can go to legacy.faustjs.org. And these are all of the um, docs as you know it with GQD, all the hooks and so on. So yes, this is all available today. You can get started with it today by going to faustjs.org. You can follow this getting started guide. We've got an example project here that have a lot of this all set up for you and you can start uh, checking it out and playing around with the, the template hierarchy solution and all these are other great things. And then Blake from Frame, we have a question. Will it run on Node 18? And then should we also go ahead and address Next.js 13 as well? Yeah, yeah, great point. Um, Fran, uh, Node 18, we should be supporting it. We haven't necessarily looked and made sure it is supported. We've checked Node 14, 16, uh, but we do intend on supporting Node 18 as well. Um, Matt, would you like to take on the Next 13 question? Yeah, so for the next uh, next JS 13, so far, it looks like everything is supposed to be backwards compatible and those type of things, but we actually have a huge spike that's in process right now, and we will, we should know here shortly um, what the major effects are going to be and if we'll adopt it right away and those type of things, um, but we'll definitely know here very quickly. But so yeah. far, it's, it's looking very positive right now. Absolutely. Yeah, I see another uh, question that's that in the chat, too, from Zachary. He said, got it, so Faust JS 4 is EOL. Um, great question. So uh, FaustJS Core is not EOL. Um, we're still supporting that. We're still providing security fixes and improvements. Um, so yeah, we're still supporting that fully. Um, it's not EOL. Um, this is just the new version um, that we've started working on. So yeah, great question there as well. Um, let's see, just making sure we're caught up here on the chat. There's one from Zach. Saw that you're now using Faust WP Core. Is this a new package to be using or replacing Faust Core JS with? or are they for separate uses entirely? Yep, yeah, great question. Um, yeah, so these are for separate uses entirely, uh, just to make sure that users that are using the FaustJS core packages aren't you know, accidentally updating to latest and you know, enc encountering a totally new version. So um, you know, Faust with GQD and Faust with Apollo, these are two com pretty much completely separate builds. We've kind of rebuilt it from the ground up. So doing a blanket update um, you know, would, would definitely break sites. So we wanted to make sure that we had new package naming and conventions so that users aren't accidentally updating and, and hitting that roadblock. So yeah, that's the reason for the different naming. Um, and so, yeah, these are two, um, two separate use cases entirely. Um, another, another kind of question based on that is we will, we don't have it yet, but within the next week or two, we plan on having a migration guide for those that wanna go from um, you know, Faust with GQD to Faust with Apollo. Um, it's not quite as simple as like a CLI update command, but we should have steps that you can take to, to do that. Um, we recently just transformed the um, portfolio blueprint to use um, new Faust. So if any of y'all want to check out, you know, a starting point, feel free to um, go to the user portal and try out that new version of the portfolio. Um, but yeah, we will have an upgrade site, upgrade guide soon um, for how users can do that. All right, let's uh, let's get back into this. I would I'd like really want to show you all um, the plugin system and how that works. We think this is going to be super super helpful for not only developers but plugin authors as well that want to create their own plugins for Faust. Um, we've got one really basic one here at the moment. So this is just a kind of like a hello world demonstration. Um, we've got this plugin called Testing Possible Templates plugin. And you can see here, we have this uh, function called add filter. So we're able to tap into any piece of the framework. In this case, we're tapping into the possible templates list filter. And you can see we're just returning the possible templates back, but adding testing as a, as a possible template as well. So if we go ahead and go and visit a, um, or well, we've got our, our plugin here. Let's add it to our um, config. So you can see here, we're instantiating this new plugin, testing possible templates plugin. And so if we just visit a URL again, so let's go back to the homepage. And if we look at our possible templates, we can now see we've got testing as an option in addition to front page, home and index. So this is a super, super basic example, but just kind of demonstrates how you can tap into any piece of the framework and alter as you see fit. Um, Jason Ball and I were working on this a bit ago, but uh, you know, he's, he recently launched wpgraphical.com on this new version of Faust. 
and needed um, to use persisted queries like with Apollo, um, but we don't have support for that quite yet from the Faust level, it's not a smart default. So he was able to plug into the plugin system and add that through the Apollo config um, just by creating a really simple plugin. So, um, you know, that's just one of the use cases that we weren't even thinking of initially when we were building this, but it's really great to see just the power that the plugin system enables um, just by, you know, having access to every piece of, uh, of the framework under the hood. Yep, so that's the plugin system. So, so far we've uh, kind of demonstrated the use of the plugin system, our template hierarchy solution, and then our Next.js file-based pages. Anyone else have any other questions or anything that I could go into more in depth? There's one here from David Levine or Levine. Sorry if I'm butchering your name. It says, is there a list of the hooks we can tap into or is that still a work in progress? Yeah, yeah, great question, David. Um, there will be soon. We've got a spike or, a, or a, a tick in our backlog for this sprint, I'm pretty sure, to list out all of those hooks. So not at the moment, but I can give you a, um, yeah, I could send you on Discord or something, a, a quick GitHub search to, for all of the possible templates, but that will be there very soon. And then we have one from John. Does this new version eliminate the skeleton render that GQD had, or is there still a skeleton render before an actual render? Yeah, great, great question, John. So this um, this version of Faust totally eliminates the skeletal render. Um, I know that was a um, you know gripe with a lot of people. It was kind of confusing. This also removes the need of any conditional rendering um, that we saw with the temp with the uh, skeletal render. So um, as long as you're providing that data upfront in your uh, templates component.query, so this block right here, um, you know, as long as your data is in here, that will essentially be fetched immediately and no need for cascading requests on the client. So um, to answer your question, yes, this new version removes the need of skeletal renders and any of those conditional kind of queries that you had to battle with before. Awesome. Anybody got any other lingering questions or things they want Blake to demo with? It's kind of some of our remaining time, but we've had a, a ton of, we've got a, another one that has auth changed. So maybe, yeah, maybe you could talk about some of the features that were preserved and those things, Blake. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great, great question, David. Um, auth has not changed for the most part. There's a few options um, that have been removed, but for the most part, this is the same auth that we have in all Faust. There's both the local variant and the redirect variant. Um, so that will be um, coming soon. We still need to document in detail how that all works and what options have been removed. Um, but for the most part, you know, 90, 95%, all of the auth will stay the same. Um, with the changes in previews as well, as I mentioned before, the previews are kind of different in terms of how the developer experience looks, but auth under the hood has, has remained the same. Can I ask Very you? cool. Yeah, please. Um, I'm in a strange situation where I'm using the first core, but I'm actually using it with Apollo right now. Um, just wondering if there will be any issues or any suggestions for doing a migration to the new first JS for someone who's actually using the old one with Apollo. Cause I just, I just found Apollo easier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, in that case, um, it really depends. It's it's hard to answer because the you know depending on how you developed your site, um, it could be totally changed. But um, you know depending on what parts you are using a, um, Apollo with, you may find that the migration is a bit easier just because you know maybe that stuff will be the same. For instance, if you're using use query in your components from Apollo, um, you know that could be a lot easier than refactoring from GQD. So um, I hate to give this answer, but it really depends on your use case. Um, I think. We might be able to answer that a bit better in the week, in the coming week or two when we have that migration guide. Um, but feel free, I could reach out on Discord too and kind of you know helps have some more context when that migration guide's available. Last one is um, I know with the old GQD you had to sort of do a, a prefetch of your schema. Mm -hmm. um, do you still have to do that with with the new first? Yeah, that's a great question. So it's not quite the same um, with with GQD. You did you have to you had to, every single every single time your schema changed even a little bit, you'd have to run that um, you know generate command to uh, 
you know, completely regenerate your schema. Um, in this case, not so much. Um, there's this file called possible types, and this is kind of an, a, an Apollo convention. Um, and so typically whenever you add a new CPT or something like that, we recommend regenerating possible types. Otherwise, like pagination may not work in some instances. Um, so yeah, that's the only difference. Um, it's not as common, but it does still exist. We've got this generate command here um, in the package lock. Um, the benefit of us being able to control the CLI is we may in the future be able to generate for these for you on like when you're running dev um, so that it's kind of behind the scenes. Uh, but as of right now, yes, there is still a schema, so to speak. Um, it's just, um, you know, it's not going to completely break your site if you don't, uh, if you're not always up to date, but we do recommend doing that every time you either, um, you know, create a new CPT or have very big breaking changes from the data, um, data scheme to your um, Next.js front end. Hey, Blake, we have a question here and uh, we kind of addressed it earlier a little bit, but Taylor Stas says Gutenberg support. So um, our engineer who is, you know, super deep into that and has been working on it for the last month or so is that unfortunately not here with us today. Um, but Blake, did you want to give kind of like a, a high level kind of quick overview of what we kind of been working towards or working on? Sure. Yeah. 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 Like, uh, like Matt said, Theo, who's kind of our lead on our Gutenberg work so far is, is wasn't able to make it today, but I can kind of speak on his behalf in terms of what we're doing. Um, and maybe even Jason Ball can help out here, but um, at the, at the moment right now, currently in this sprint and the ones coming up, um, we're creating a plugin for WP GraphQL that kind of brings up the um, blocks as a, as an API so we can access it through, um, you know, through Faust. Um, so we're working on that and then kind of just making it, API first and program programmable. Um, this will also be in a package outside of Faust Core. So if you don't need to use it, yeah, you don't need to, you don't have to, but um, it will be a separate package where we can kind of experiment and, and build with that. So um, sorry, it's not a ton of information, but um, hopefully we can create another one of these um, events soon and kind of go really deep dive into all the Gutenberg work um, that we've been doing. So yeah, that is definitely something we'll get scheduled for probably probably next quarter, right? Hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, that would sure. be awesome. Yeah. Um, one other interesting thing here, Blake. So Jonathan Moat says the plugin and temp template path features have me wondering how feasible it would be to support a child theme like architecture. Hmm. Yeah, very interesting. So uh, we don't really have an official stance on this yet, but as you can see here, like this is just a directory. And the Faust config is just linking to that directory. So um, we have played around with the idea of, you know, having a themes directory and you can, um, you know, change the themes that you want to use on a whim. But um, we've definitely also seen that. And um, it's pretty exciting. We don't have too much info on it so far, but um, it would be pretty cool to have, you know, a, a child theme kind of convention where, you know, users have their Faust site and they can pull in themes. Um, you know, as they'd like, it would even almost create like a marketplace where people could build themes for Faust. So we would be, we'd be pretty excited about that. But yeah, we've definitely seen that as well. And then we have uh, John here says with GQD out, where there'll be no more type hinting when using TypeScript. Yeah, awesome question here, John. Uh, we're just in the early stages. You know, uh, one of the things that we've decided for those of y'all that are, are building um, with GQD Faust, it was all TypeScript based. I mean, um, you know, Faust as we know it today is also built with TypeScript, but the example projects were all TypeScript and so on. And so as a developer, if you're new to headless, if you're new to, you know, headless WordPress and new to JavaScript, the last thing you want is to also learn TypeScript. So um, we built the example projects with a JavaScript mindset, um, but we do fully intend on supporting TypeScript typings um, with Apollo. So there's tools out there that we can do that with. We just haven't quite got there yet, but we've got tickets in the backlog to address that and, and have support for that. So that's definitely coming. Um, I also see a question here, um, or just to want to bring this up, Alex says you can also set up that generate command to run every time you run dev build. So yeah, this is a great point. Um, we are doing this, I think in our portfolio blueprint, but um, you know, you could essentially run, um, you know, Faust, uh, let's see, you know, Faust generate, or I guess it would be NPM run generate. 
you know, and Faust dev, if you, if you wanted to go that route. Um, but yeah, until we, until we actually have a stance where we're doing that, um, you know, for you, this could be an acceptable alternative if you do want to generate those every time you run dev or build. Let's see, just catching up here with the questions here. Yeah, we've got a lot of questions. We've had a, covered a lot of ground, y'all. Um, why why is it called Faust? That's me. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, I believe we have a uh, an FAQ for this. We just recently added because we do get that question a lot. But ideally, so uh, yeah, here we go. I could either read this verbatim, but. Essentially, Joanne Faust was a German printer um, along with um, Gutenberg. So if you do want more info on that, um, you can go to faustjs.org and then go to the FAQs and I'll read a little bit more about that. But yeah, definitely not the first time we've gotten that question. It is an obscure historical reference. Yeah, so no deals <laughs> with the devil. That was my assumption was that you were selling, yep. selling your soul to the devil for headless WordPress uh, powers. Yeah. yeah. Or really we could also call it mm -hmm. Blake JS. Uh, not, not after you, Blake, after William Blake, of course, another yeah, of obscure, course. obscure yeah. literary reference. Um, well, awesome. Yeah. So if, if y'all got any other questions or comments or anything you want uh, to ask the team while they're here, definitely throw it in the chat. Um, where can I get this recording to share with my team? Uh, this will be up on our YouTube channel by next Monday. So stay tuned for that. Um, just to give you all kind of like a couple of things to look forward to. Um, so while I'm really hype about Faust, and obviously like we have a team at WP Engine who's put a lot of effort and energy into Faust, uh, Faust is by no means the only framework that you can use on our hosting platform. Um, and so on December 1st, Fran and I are going to try to deploy as many different JavaScript frameworks to our Atlas platform as we can in an hour. So if you're interested in kind of like looking at what else is out there, um, seeing how the app Atlas platform handles all those different things in a little bit more detail, uh, that's going to happen, I think, at the same time, two, two to three on December 1st. Yeah. So stay tuned for um, details about that. We'll have a registration link uh, shared on Twitter. And, and everywhere at deploy a palooza. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's our goal right now. I think we said five in an hour, so we'll see how far we get. Oh, we're going to try uh, to break this. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Speed we, deploying we, is the new Olympic game. Do we have any more? So like, yeah, that, that's a good question. If y'all wanted to like, what would you want to see deployed? Give us whatever we're you try want to do Astro yeah. remix next, next Faust, Faust and Nux. Gatsby. Maybe Gatsby. Anything Cobol. else like Cobol? Cobol oh, I don't know. <laughs> we might just run a straight express. I was looking uh -oh. at the pug docs from express. So maybe I'll just go yeah. uh, pug and express and do that. It's going to be like um, the world cup of front end frameworks, but Rust. There we go. Out. Rust would be cool. Spelt kit. Oh yeah. Oh, there's spelt. spelt. Yeah. We should yeah, get that's spelt a good in call, there, man. honestly. Good call. Yeah. Yeah. Get spelt. No. And somebody also had a good question. Should I forget about understanding the Atlas blueprint blog? And Blake, you may have mentioned this, but I think y'all are taking a little bit of a different tactic with one of the newer blueprints, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Great question, Herb. Um, so yes, the, the Atlas Blueprint blog and Atlas Blueprint basic, um, we, we're going to be deprecating those in the coming days. And we're going to be focusing on Atlas Blueprint portfolio. So portfolio now has um, new Faust. And we're going to be introducing um, within the next week or two, um, Atlas Blueprint Scaffold, which is just a super, super bare bones setup of the app and all of the uh, routing without any styles just for users that want to um, jump in and get started. So yes, um, I, I would hold off on using Atlas Blueprint blog for the time being. Um, if you do want to use something right away, I would check out the portfolio. Yeah, I, I compared like the right level of abstraction for a developer is cooking al dente pasta. Like it's got to be just, just right. Can't be too soft. Can't be too hard. Um, so yeah, hopefully this, this new blueprint is, I guess, a little bit more flexible for everybody. Um, but awesome. Yeah. So anybody last minute questions for the team, but super, super awesome presentation, y'all. Thank you so much for one, all of your work to get us to this point of having this new awesome tool that we can use. And thanks for sharing all your knowledge with everyone. 
Um, for those of us, for, for uh, sorry, for those of you on the call who haven't joined our Discord, definitely uh, do that. That's that's a recommended action because uh, you just got direct access to any of us if you need have questions about Faust. You know the, those team members are hanging out and lurking in the discords. And if not, um, I'm in there answering questions all the time and we'll often pass them stuff. So like the typing thing, uh, we've had a ton of feedback about and we were able to have a ticket made for that two weeks ago because a bunch of people asked about it. Um, so it's a really great, great way for you to ask questions and get feedback. Um, yeah, and also check out the WP GraphQL Slack channel there. Do I offer life advice? Um, <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. I'll do that. I don't know if you want to take it, but I'll offer it. <laughs> yeah, did want did want to just echo uh, Jeff's sentiment there. Like, uh, you know, a lot of stuff was covered today. So if you have a question but you can't quite formulate it quite yet, feel free to pop into Discord and, and ask there. Uh, we'd be happy to answer any more questions about the new framework. Yep. And and Dave's got a question about us having an RSS feed. We have a ticket for it, but we're probably going to switch this to new files before we, before yeah. we knock that one out. Well, awesome, folks. We're we're pushing up on our time there. Um, but you know, like if you got any last minute questions, you know, maybe throw them in the chat, save them for discord, um, whatever last you want to do there. But, uh, oh yeah, sure thing. Um, quick thing. Oh, loving all of this. This is awesome. This is exciting. Um, wondering if you have any specific or recommended resources for people who are using, um, fast or headless with, um, WooCommerce. Um, I know that I there's, know I know that that there's do with had less um, plugin and stuff, but um, I think that might be some good docs that could be helpful. And since I'm working on that, feel free to reach out to me and maybe I might be able to even share some stuff from what I'm experiencing with using uh, Fast with um, uh, WordPress. Because they, they have examples for pulling out posts and pages and stuff, um, but there's no specific stuff for, okay, how do you manipulate your... Um, product pages, how do you manipulate your checkout and all that kind of stuff. Those okay. things would be nice, but I'm kind of writing notes for the stuff that I'm working on since I need it for my project. Oh, so, cool. Yeah. Well, definitely share any of that info in Discord. I know we have a number of people in there who are, uh, you know, in varying ways building with WooCommerce. Um, so I'm sure that would all be super beneficial to them. It's definitely something that we've kind of got on our roadmap um, to do down the line. And I think we actually had a headless ecom blue blueprint example in the old Faust that um, used Woo. That we, yeah, that did use Woo. That's we, we interesting. Made one, yeah. yeah, we made one as a part of an internal hackathon. Um, so well, we had that for the old Faust. So we'll see if that. we can. I wouldn't mind. It wasn't. Out. We didn't publicly put it out there because I think it was. Um, it wasn't as fully baked as the other blueprints were. Uh, but I definitely pass it along to a few folks as a reference item when they were like, how do I get products or product details? But honestly, I, I feel like a lot of that stuff should hopefully be a little bit simpler with Apollo um, than it was with GQD. So like, yeah, that's that, that to me is solving that problem at the root where it was like most people weren't confused about what was happening with Woo. It was more like, I don't know how to get this data from GQD in the way that I expect. So and there is another big, uh, big commerce one with e-commerce. Yes, that is a, yep, that is a good point. And that, that I think is in, in beta right now and maybe yeah. looking to GA uh, in, in January. So stay tuned for that as well. Yeah, in fact, that one with big commerce will also be a uh, new Faust as well. So just heads oh, up on that as well. Oh, awesome. Awesome. That's great to hear. And that one's kind of neat because there's a plug-in integration and you know a lot, lot, lot more to that blueprint um, than I think there was for the example that Theo and I and MJ worked on uh, for that hackathon, which was pretty, pretty basic, but served its purpose in giving people an example. Um, awesome. One, one more, one yeah. more thing, Jeff. I whoever was asking for the headless WooCommerce stuff, I happen to have a copy of the code base for this site right here, Schmackeries.com, which is like a you know, boutique cookie shop in New York City. And it was actually written by Jeff Taylor, the guy who, you know, is behind the WP GraphQL um, uh, for WooCommerce extension. So he's he's the one who like took took this client on as a site, uh, this this client on um for for a project. So it's not uh it's not a public repo. So I can't like I can't just link you to it, but please reach out to me and I can I can just send you like a zip if you want, just a reference, you know, to reference like how they set up uh 
the WordPress backend, and then also the Next.js based front end to pull in all the product data and do the cart and stuff like that in case that's helpful. You shoot me a message like in our Discord. Oh, I will shoot you a message. Awesome. Sure. Are you <laughs> the right. one who has YouTube videos with the skits? Yeah, that's me. You got it. I love, I love <laughs> those. Those are awesome. Ah, nice. <laughs> I think I've watched pretty much almost all of them. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Rock on. All right. Well, awesome, everybody. Yep. So thanks again to everybody for joining us today. Don't forget, uh, we got another event coming up on December 1st. Um, but thanks again for coming. And with that, have a good afternoon. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Yep.